Welcome, Greek U Nation, to episode number 387 of the Fraternity Foodie Podcast. I'm your host, Mike Ayalon, CEO of Greek University. I am a speaker and an author. Our third book is called From Letters to Leaders, Leveraging Your Fraternity or Sorority Experience to Land Your Dream Job. So go and pick up that book today on Amazon. We call these episodes the Fraternity Foodie Podcast because there is nothing like great food to bring college students together. Fun fact, if you ask me what is the difference between a successful student that I've worked with over the years and then the ones that don't ultimately reach their goals, I'll tell you that it's all about resilience. If you believe that you can overcome the obstacles that are placed in front of you or you don't believe it, either way, you're absolutely right. It ultimately boils down to whether you're going to be able to get back up after life knocks you down, which it inevitably is going to do. So let's talk a little bit more about resilience on today's show, because it is such a critical conversation for today's college students. Our next guest is Shamika Baptist. She is the author and inspirational speaker behind The Strength Within. She is a young woman that grew up in the foster care system who defied the odds. Today, she shares her journey of resilience with others. Her hope is that it provides others the courage and the strength to keep fighting and to persevere because the strength within is what will carry you through. Shamika believes that your past does not define your present or your future and that God has a purpose for you. Welcome to the show, Shamika. Hi, Michael. Thank you for having me today. It is my pleasure. It's an honor to have you on the show. And I can't wait to share your story with our college students. I know that they're going to learn so much about resilience and all the things that you've been through in life. But for you, I know that it started very early on. You had an incredibly difficult childhood and you ended up growing up in the foster care system. Tell us a little bit about your childhood and your early years. I think for me, my early years were sad. They were confusing. Um, They were depressing. Not all of them, though. Um, Depending on what moment in my childhood you're asking about, there were ups and downs throughout. Um, I think in my younger, younger, younger years, um, meaning toddler age, happiness, um, contentment, Going into my older years, going into preteens, more depressing, um, more sadness. But then once I evolved, got a little bit older, I began to find a sense of happiness, not complete happiness, but it got a little bit better. I think there were a lot of ups and downs. It was like an emotional roller coaster. (laughs) Man, oh, man. I mean, you know, what you always talk about is that your past doesn't define your future. So the college students who are listening to this right now, they have really no idea what their purpose is or what their destiny in life really is. So how can they figure that out? I think for me, we never truly know what our destiny is, right? Only God knows that. But I feel like if you show up every day in your authentic self and you give life 100% every day, You can look in the mirror every day and honestly say to yourself, I gave my all 100%. I was the best person that I could be today. You are one step closer to fulfilling your destiny and your purpose in life. It's one of those unquestioned or unanswered questions. Like, are you fulfilling your destiny? Are you fulfilling your purpose? I don't know. Only God knows. But I think if you can honestly look yourself in the mirror and say, you know what? I put my best foot forward today. I gave myself and the world 100% of my true authentic self to be the best version that I could be today. That is in itself the solidification of you living in your destiny and your purpose. That's a good way to look at it. I like that a lot. Um, In reading your book, it's called The Strength Within, clearly you are a very resilient individual. What are some things that our listeners can do on a daily basis in order to find that strength within? So to me, the foundation of finding the strength within begins with self-accountability. We all have traumas and shortcomings in life. It doesn't matter if you were in the foster care system or if you grew up with a two-parent household. We all have some type of traumas and shortcomings. It's just life. 
I think that when we embrace people for who they are and accept moments for what they are, that's where we find the strength because you can never change it. Once we have these moments, these moments become a part of our past. We can either allow these moments to handicap us or we can allow these moments to give us strength. Every moment has a lesson. Now, what you take from the moment begins with your self-accountability, right? What you take from it and what you learn from it is what will help you elevate and grow. And then I think that when we shift our mindset and we focus on the positive and not the negative, um, that's where we see the change as well with our perspective in life. Mm. Yeah, we need to be grateful about all the positive things in our life. I think you're absolutely right. It's easy for us to focus on what we don't have, especially when you think about social media and we're comparing ourselves to everybody else that we know. And, oh, this person is on vacation or this person just bought a brand new car or whatever. And so we're always thinking about what we don't have instead of taking the perspective of, man, am I grateful? I have a roof over my head. I have, you know, working utilities. I got a, a bathroom, right? I got, you know, all of these things. I have food in the refrigerator. I mean, simple things that I think we do need to be grateful for. And if we start every day with conversations like that, totally transforms the rest of the day. Um, so I really like that. Now, you also talked about cognitive reframing in order to shift your mindset. Tell our audience what you mean when you say cognitive reframing to shift your mindset. So cognitive reframing is a technique that's used to shift your mindset. Mm -hmm. So you're able to look at a situation um, or a personal relationship from a slightly different perspective. So an example that I'd like to use is oftentimes we hear people say the glass is half empty, right? That's looking at it from a negative perspective. But when you look at it with gratitude and look at it from a positive perspective, you say the glass is half full, right? Because we could be in a situation to where the glass has nothing in it whatsoever. And so when we focus on the positive and not the negative, I often tell people for every negative, there is a positive. And I live by this. I act upon this every day. I am a firm believer of this. When you look at things from a positive perspective, and instead of focusing on the tribulations of life, when you look at the triumphs, right? Because although you went through that trial or that tribulation, you're on the other side now, and that is the triumph of it. And so when we shift our mindset to look at it from a positive perspective, right? Positive thoughts will eventually lead to positive actions. And then positive actions are going to lead to a positive reality. And so, yes, it's easy to think of the negativity and the shortcomings, but it's only going to handicap you if you allow it to. That's where the self-accountability comes in. That's where the reframing comes in, because we have to remember, you've got to put it out to the universe so the universe brings it back. If you think negative thoughts, the universe is going to bring negativity back to you. But if you think positive thoughts, the universe is going to bring positive positivity back to you. And so... Once you change your mindset and, and just shift your thinking a little bit, you'll see the dynamic of your world shift in a positive perspective. Mm -hmm. I totally agree with you. I mean, people will say that I have a positive attitude all the time. Um, and so, I mean, that's one of the things that's just my thing. I always try to maintain that positive attitude no matter what. I think there's also people on my team that also ground me too. And they say, okay, but understand like this is the reality, right? This is what's happening and what's not happening. Um, so I count on them to basically point these things out to me when I'm always maintaining that positive mindset. Um, you know, the other thing that I think is really interesting is a conversation around confidence. Because you believe that one of the key differentiators between successful people and unsuccessful people is resilience. And so how can we build some more confidence in today's college students, for example, when maybe they haven't done a ton of things in their life, that they haven't had a ton of accomplishments yet? They're just, you know, they're students, basically. So how can they build more confidence? So I'm going to be honest with you. And I am literally a straight shooter mm -hmm. when it comes to that. Mm -hmm. How can you expect 
anyone in this world to believe in you if you don't believe in yourself. Mm -hmm. So a person can tell you every negative connotation that you will be in life. You will never be anything. You will end up dead. You will end up in jail. You will end up homeless, whatever, whatever it is, whatever negative that they could speak upon you. The only way that comes to fruition is if you believe it, right? But if you believe in yourself, the self-confidence comes from within yourself. I don't care what someone tells you you will or will not be. What do you want to be? Where do you think that you see yourself? What is the level of success and achievements that you see yourself obtaining? If you don't see it for yourself, you can never expect the world to see it for you. If you don't believe in yourself, you can never expect the world to believe in you, let alone a single person. It all, it, it all begins with yourself and what do you want? Um, I'm just a firm believer in that. That's where, again, the self-accountability comes in. I don't care what a person tells you you will or will not become. Ultimately, you are in control of your destiny and you have to find that strength to say, hey, I am resilient. I am amazing. And this is who or what I'm going to be. And so if you don't believe in yourself, you can't expect anyone else to believe in you. I like your visualizations of where you want to go and what you want to do in life. I think that's why a lot of people use these like vision boards where they'll show like, okay, this is like the house that I want to live in, or this is the car that I want to buy just to visualize where they're going in life and what their goal is. Um, and sometimes you have to do that and you have to do that on a regular basis. Maybe what do I want to get over the next 12 months and visualize that. Um, so I really like that a lot. And clearly you're using these positive affirmations. I mean, I could hear it woven through your stories. So can you give us some examples and explain how positive affirmations can help us? So positive affirmations help us because again, when you think positivity, right? When you think positive thoughts, you act on positive thoughts because your thoughts control your actions, right? And then your actions are gonna bring us a positive reality. And so with positive affirmations, instead of thinking of all of the reasons why you cannot do something, think of all of the reasons why you can. And, and you have to speak that over yourself. Instead of saying, well, I'm a failure or this might not work, you will say, I will succeed. I will pass this test. I will get this job. I will get this car. I will buy my house. I will do this and I will. You have to say, I will, or I am. I am resilient. I am amazing. When you speak these words, these words are going to start programming your brain. And so your brain, which is your thoughts, you're now going to start walking with confidence. You're going to start acting with confidence in the world and in life because you're believing what you're saying. And so when you believe what you say, failure is not an option. Um, not succeeding is not an option. It's just not because you're thinking positivity. And so there's no way to really go wrong with the positive affirmations because it literally becomes your reality. Like, just everything around you. I'm with you. If you can try that, even, you know, just for a few days straight, I think you'll start to see a shift. Um, if you actually start using these positive affirmations on a daily basis. Um, and, you know, the other thing that I noticed about you is, you know, you're, you can tell that you're a spiritual person. Um, talk to us a little bit about the role that religion plays in your life. This is another one of those things I'm black and white, I'm sorry. <laughs> but for me, faith is very important. And either you have faith or you don't, right? Faith cannot be taught. These are what this was just one of those things in life. Some people might disagree with me and that's fine, but you can't teach someone how to have faith in God. For me, God has always seen me through. I have been in moments in my life to where I've had it all and I've lost it all. My life was in disarray when I was angry and sad and just lost, aging fresh out of foster care. I had nothing and nobody and I had to figure it out. When I started 
straying away from God and 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 getting more distant from God, I realized that and this is self-reflection mm -hmm. that my life was just all over the place. When I became closer to God and I got that connection and I got my relationship back right with God, my life has transformed in such a positive magnitude. And so when it comes to faith, it's not something that's taught. Either you want that faith and you want that relationship with God or you do not. Now, I understand everyone does not believe in God. However, I do. And for me, he works for me. Um, he has seen me through every trial and tribulation. And, you know, that's really all I can say. And it, it literally... My faith is what has carried me through, I'll tell you, since I was a child into my adult years to who I am today. And um, it works for me. Maybe it might work for other people. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. There's no question about that. You know, one thing that I wanted to touch upon a little bit, too, is, you know, you mentioned your difficult childhood and growing up in the foster care system. What is your advice to listeners right now who are also uh, part of the foster care uh, system in the country and maybe they're struggling right now? What's your advice to them? Don't you ever give up. God has a purpose for you. And this moment that you are in right now is going to become a part of your past. You're going to grow up. You're going to be amazing. You're going to be resilient. Do not allow these shortcomings to hurt you, handicap you, hinder you in any way, shape, form, or fashion. For me, I grew up with brokenness, but I'm so thankful. And you will be one day too, because it is going to give you the strength that you need to be the amazing individual that you are today. And meaning today, I am prophesizing over your future self. When you grow up and you become an adult and you age out of the foster care system, you're going to be thankful because you are going to be able to know how to adapt and adjust in society. Whereas a lot of people are not going to know how to do that. You are going to be able to maneuver. You will have the skills to be able to understand that this is uncomfortable, but you will be able to know what it's like to be uncomfortable to be in these situations. And so embrace what you're going through now, learn the lessons, take in all the knowledge because you're going to need it when you get older. And just understand that everything you're going through is to make you the unique, divine individual that you are meant to be once you become an adult and you, and you get older and you get wiser. And you will be beyond your years once you turn 18. You will be beyond your years once you turn 21 and so on and so forth. But don't you ever give up that fight and don't ever let your faith go. Ooh, that's powerful stuff. I mean, you know, you took a lot of obstacles that you had in your life uh, and you've turned them into a positive. And uh, I think even just growing up in the foster care system, you can see that because you're talking about, you know, the fact that you're going to be adaptable uh, in the future because of that experience. I mean, not a lot of people would look at it that way. A lot of, you know, most people would just, you know, they would say, woe is me, you know, like I, I had a difficult childhood. Um, but you found a way to turn that into a positive and to make it better for you. Um, so I, I have to applaud you. I think uh, that outlook is just incredible. Um, you know, and you wrote a wonderful book. It's called The Strength Within. Um, and hopefully our audience is going to go and pick that up. Written, of course, by Shamika Baptist. What's the next project for you? What do you want to do next? <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm going to be honest. Mm -hmm. My next project, because honestly, I've written and self-published four books. My next project is wherever God takes me. And I will be thankful because I know it's going to be a positive journey. Um, I feel like my um, my chapter of writing books has came to a pause. I'm not going to say it's ended because I don't know what he has for me. But mm -hmm. you will hear me and see me on more podcasts near you. Um, and, you know, honestly, I'm just thankful for for where I am. I don't know what my next project is, but I will definitely keep everyone posted. Um, if anyone wants to contact me. You can find my website at www. Um, 
the slash strength dash within.com. I know that's a lot, but that's how I had to make it. Or you can also connect with me on Instagram at um, the strength within official page. Very cool. All right. Well, all of our listeners really enjoyed this interview. So I just wanted to say thank you so much for sharing your story with them, sharing your book. They're going to go and check you out on Instagram so that way they can follow you and just keep up to date on all the projects that you're going to be involved with. But uh, I like how you're just taking it one day at a time, not getting too far ahead of yourself, just saying, hey, whatever is you know God's plan for me, I'll be ready for it. <laughs> I really am. I think that's just how I live life. But you know what? That's where the gratitude comes in. That's where the, the excitement comes in. That's where I'm able to embrace. That's the strength, right? Because I can do a self-reflection like, wow look where I came from and look where I'm going, like, look what I'm doing. Um, so yeah, I'm excited. I'm, w I'm with you guys. I don't know what's going to happen, but I'm excited right along with you just to kind of find out what it is. I'm excited. <laughs> Very cool. All right. Well, listen, Shamika, what can I say? Thank you so much for being here. I, I know our audience had a good time with you. I hope that they're going to go and check out your book. It's called The Strength Within. And thank you so much for sharing your story. Thank you for um, having me today, Michael. Thank you. You're very welcome. And to our listeners, if you enjoyed this conversation today with Shamika, make sure that you like it on social media. Make sure you share it with other college students. And we look forward to seeing you on another episode of the Fraternity Foodie Podcast. Thanks so much for joining us, and we'll see you next time.